Hello, little star seeds. Welcome to my channel. Today, I have a guided message for you directly from the spirit guides. The guides are telling me that by the time you click off of this video, you will be subscribed and you won't skip any of the ads. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more guided messages from me and drop a like for divine protection. Namaste. So if you are on TikTok, then you may have gotten some sort of guided message at some point in your time on that app. But before getting on with the rest of the video, I wanted to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Love Honey. Love Honey is an award-winning adult toy and lingerie retailer whose mission is to bring happiness and pleasure while banishing taboos around intimacy and sex. Love Honey is hosting a giveaway and you can sign up in just three easy steps. Step one is to sign up with my designated link in my description and through that link you will be emailed your first gift voucher. Step two, using the emailed link, the gift voucher will be automatically applied to your cart. And then finally, step three, you will be added to the weekly giveaways where they give away gift vouchers and toys throughout the year and winners will be contacted via DM from at Love Honey Official. So Love Honey gave me three toys and the first one that I'm gonna show you is the Womanizer. It comes in this nice, discreet travel packaging. It's got eight intensity levels and is waterproof. It also uses Pleasure Air technology, similar to their Rose toy. The Love Honey Rose also comes with 10 functions, is waterproof and has a 65 minute runtime. And lastly, I wanna show you the We Vibe Touch X Magic Multitasker. It's whisper quiet and has eight intensity levels. It's waterproof and is perfectly sculpted to stimulate erogenous zones and it can be used solo or with your partner. So if you're interested in entering the giveaway, then first up is clicking the link in my description. Thank you Love Honey for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to our scheduled programming. New Age spirituality has been kind of a trending thing within popular culture for the last couple of years now and it seems to be showing its ugly side now more than ever. And I've been seeing some people online who are being, I guess you could say diagnosed. I use the word loosely. No one's actually diagnosing anybody for real out here, but some people are being diagnosed with something called spiritual psychosis. New age spirituality has become quite mainstream in the past few years, especially among millennials and Gen Z. The younger generations have rejected traditional organized religion due to its perceived restrictions, judgmental nature, and poor reputation when it comes to acceptance of others, bodily autonomy, especially for women and reproductive rights, the list goes on. Many people feel wronged by the religion they were brought up with. Now I'm alluding mostly towards Christianity because that's the religion I'm most familiar with growing up in the US, but you know, young people have been a lot more open about their religious traumas and their departure from the church. All that being said, humans are humans and we still seek spiritual guidance or at the very least purpose and meaning. Purpose and meaning is a integral part of the human experience and it can be extremely daunting to go throughout life without it. Since the pandemic and the ongoing political unrest in the world and in the US, the loneliness crisis that we're experiencing right now, people now more than ever are desperate for salvation and answers as well as community. Many people, especially the younger generations, fear the unknown and the potentially dark future ahead of us. Many of us are looking for reasons to keep going. We need faith and so naturally we gravitate towards spirituality and when organized religion isn't appealing, things like new age spirituality and metaphysics seem very appealing. We've lost faith in the system. We can't just go to college and leave debt-free, buy a house, start a family like our parents, but maybe we can manifest abundance. Maybe we can buy the right money manifesting crystals and with the insights of a tarot card reader, we can be led towards a rich husband who will take care of all of our problems and whisk us away to Dubai. Or maybe a long weekend in the desert or an ayahuasca retreat will fix our depression and anxiety and bring us to a reality that we we desire but don't have a grasp on. All of this spiritual stuff is good and great. I know I personally love to partake in some woo-woo stuff um, and I have my own spiritual beliefs and practices. I totally am behind the benefits of meditation that seems to be scientifically proven more than anything. But unfortunately, when it gets too far, it can get really dark. So there are kind of two sides of the spectrum that I wanna talk about when it comes to spiritual psychosis. There's the actual extreme psychosis that is actually a real diagnosis. And then there's the other side, which is more of a 
casual obsession that can still be very unhealthy and cause distress, but not actual psychosis. And maybe somewhere in the middle, delusion is somewhere in there. So major, major, major disclaimer here. Spiritual psychosis is not an actual diagnosis in the DSM-5. Psychosis is, as well as schizophrenia, which I will define in a moment, but I wanted to make that clear because this is more of a colloquial term that's been going around on TikTok. That's where I've been seeing it mostly. And it's something that people have kind of created and have assigned onto other people or even onto themselves as a way to kind of try and understand what people are going through. I think it's important to define some of these terms so we really understand what they mean because sometimes I think people will use the phrase spiritual psychosis to describe someone who's manic or delusional or is in gen like literal psychosis and the thing with psychosis is that it does have spiritual elements but it just because it has spiritual elements it doesn't mean it's like this specific spiritual psychosis diagnosis because that doesn't actually exist. But I'm still gonna be using the phrase because I'm analyzing the use of the phrase and what I interpret it, what I think it means based off of the discussion I've been seeing online. Hope that made sense. So. That being said, the definition of psychosis. Psychosis refers to a collection of symptoms that affects the mind where there has been some loss of contact with reality. During an episode of psychosis, a person's thoughts and perceptions are disrupted and they may have difficulty recognizing what is real and what is not. And so when we think psychosis, we think psychotic, Schizophrenia is the primary disorder that comes to mind when we discuss psychotic disorders, though there are a number of other disorders that share one or more features with schizophrenia. And I will be showing a chart here. There's like schizoaffective disorder, delusional disorder, brief psychotic disorder. And so again, I think people are, are turning this spiritual psychosis phrase into an umbrella term for some of these um, schizophrenic disorders on the schizophrenic spectrum. Now that we have an understanding on that end, what is spirituality? Spirituality is kind of hard to define. It feels more like a concept that you feel or embody rather than something you can like verbalize in a concrete way. But I have a wordy definition for you, so bear with me, but I think it explains or captures the idea of spirituality well. Spirituality is a distinctive, potentially creative and universal dimension of human experience arising both within the inner subjective awareness of individuals and within communities, social groups, and traditions. It may be experienced as the relationship with that which is intimately inner, imminent, and personal within the self and others, and or as the relationship with that which is wholly other, transcendent, and beyond the self. It is experienced as being a fundamental or ultimate importance and is thus concerned with matters of meaning and purpose in life, truth, and values. So if you Google spiritual psychosis, what will come up is something along the lines of a state of mental distress that emerges as a result of experiences that are typically associated with spiritual growth and development. These experiences may involve altered states of consciousness, visions, voices, or other psychic phenomena. So something that came up a lot in my research on this topic is that when we speak of psychosis versus just a spiritual experience, the main difference, because it's kind of hard to actually define, if you're having a spiritual experience and it brings you joy or brings you enlightenment, sounds like, you know, just a regular spiritual experience. But if you're having a spiritual experience and it causes you mental distress, especially over time, that is more spiritual psychosis, right? Because I would imagine most people don't go to church or end a meditation or see or experience a sign from God and have distress afterwards, right? It's like that kind of, I feel like is the opposite of what like spirituality is meant to do. So when I mentioned the spectrum of actual psychosis versus like unhealthy obsession, a good example of the extreme end of this spectrum, the actual psychosis is Danielle Johnson, also known as Mystic Lipstick, who was a astrology influencer. She unfortunately passed away. She believed that the April eclipse that happened last month was spiritual warfare and was like the beginning of the apocalypse and she had a bunch of really alarming tweets that were really like fear-mongering. She, I don't know how to say this without getting like flagged by YouTube. It makes it sound so unserious, but like she unalived her boyfriend and her two children. One was eight months old and the other was nine years old. And then she, she uh, passed away afterwards. Some content creators who had a relationship with her have come forward and talked about their experience with her. And one of those people was actually Trey Melvin, who was a very popular YouTuber. His story was really, really intense, but unfortunately, I mean, it, it lines up with 
everything that happened towards the end of her life. Some people are like, oh, spiritual psychosis. Other people are like, oh, this is postpartum psychosis because she just had a baby. But either way, she was definitely mentally unwell and was having some sort of psychotic break or mania or delusions, all of the above. Again, not a psychologist, okay? Just as, this is all conjecture, but like based off of what I know, I feel like it's somewhat safe to say that may be true. And I don't believe that her being an astrologer or being a spiritualist and, you know, selling weekly aura cleanses on Twitter is what led her to the psychosis. I think she may have already had some mental issues before she got into spirituality or maybe her mental state just amplified her spiritual beliefs in a way that was unhealthy and influenced her in ways that were very negative. I feel like I've been hearing more and more about people who are like her or are on some spectrum of this spiritual psychosis or obsession. So Baby Storm, who is a popular TikToker and musician, has also been getting labeled with this spiritual psychosis thing. Donald Trump is going to be this year before the upcoming 2024 election. All of the rich will die and only the poor will survive. If you are poor and you are watching this, just hold on a little bit longer. I'm going to set you free very soon. You will need to flee the United States and go to any other country, but there's only one country that you cannot go to. Those who are meant to hear this message will understand immediately. My husband and I will single-handedly fund any and every poor person that wants to leave the United States. But again, that is only if you are willing to sacrifice all material possessions. Hey guys, so I know a lot of you guys have questions after I posted that one video on Saturday night and I'm here to answer all your questions, but I actually was in the hospital these past few days. Um, as many of you guys know, a lot of you guys may know my friend, well, my old friend, this um, girl, her name is Marley, aka the Glam Goth. Um, after I posted that video on Monday morning, she showed up to my house and uh, she convinced my mother um, to have me admitted into a psych ward against my will. Um, I was there for five days. Um, while I was there, I was drugged against my will as well. Um, Marley, she was there in the hospital. Um, she visited me the first night that I was staying in the hospital. Um, she tricked me. <laughs> she tricked me into going into uh, the psych ward and basically tricked me and tricked my family into lying to me to convince me so I can be, you know, held in a mental institution against my will. The reason why I posted that video the other day is because I think that I'm psychic. Um, it runs on my dad's side of the family. I posted this on my Twitter and some people were saying, oh girl, you don't sound okay because you're saying that you think you're psychic. Um, I'm sorry, do you guys not believe in psychics? Like, I thought it was common knowledge that psychics exist because I wanted to warn you guys about what I think is gonna happen if certain things don't change in the United States. Yeah, it's a, it's really concerning to me to see these people online kind of lose grasp of reality. I mean, we even saw this with Gabby Hanna a couple years ago and thankfully she's seen the other side of it and she's gotten better, but I don't know if it's the state of the world. It seems like it, especially with Baby Storm because she was talking about the election and stuff and social media and the way that these algorithms just can like sink their claws into your psyche and make you believe all these crazy things. Maybe it's because we are in the age of social media so people who are manic or in psychosis can just grab their phone and spew all this nonsense and then click posts and it reaches millions of people. People, so it seems like it's happening more often, but maybe it's always been this way and people have always been affected by mania and psychosis at the same rate. We just didn't know about it. But I do wonder if this is something that is happening to people more often because of the state of the world and how turbulent things are. Maybe I'm wrong. All that being said though, with Baby Storm or Gabby Hanna, it does appear that whatever spiritual experiences that they thought they were having, was bringing them a lot of suffering. Now, again, I'm not here to diagnose anybody because I do not have the credentials and I've never met these people in real life, but where these people fit into this phrase of spiritual psychosis or psychosis is the negative effects that it is having on their mental health. I said before, the difference between a spiritual psychosis or psychotic episode versus a spiritual experience is the dread, the terror, and the negative feelings associated with it. Typically, a spiritual experience is met with joy and peace and serenity, but with psychosis, there are serious negative effects on the individual's life and mental health. Now, some more information from the professionals. Since the ascendance of psychodynamic theories a century ago, skeptical psychologists have interpreted spiritual experience as a neurotic defense against life's vicissitudes. What seems to be important is the way in which the psychotic phenomena are embedded in the values and beliefs of the person. It is not what you believe, but how you believe it. Distress and unwanted preoccupations characterize psychosis, whereas spiritual experiences may be sought after and are often 
associated with positive life changes. Many psychiatrists and psychologists have followed Freud in interpreting spiritually transformative experiences as neurotic defenses against stress and the fear of death. Which again brings me to believe that due to the, I would say, mass distress that we're all experiencing, it's causing people to fall into these rabbit holes and be more prone to psychotic episodes or mania. I don't know if like the average person who doesn't experience mental health issues already is just gonna like be thrown into psychosis because of a turbulent election year. But I think if you're already prone to mental illness, it's more likely to happen to you considering the circumstances of the world. The fact that an experience may gratify unconscious psychological desires or defend against psychological fears does not mean that the experience is nothing but a neurotic defense. In other words, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Objects that can serve as symbols are not always just symbolic. Sometimes what seems like a spiritual experience is just a spiritual experience. Lastly, before we move on to the next section of this video, I wanted to also touch on the fact that when one has experienced psychosis and they are recovering from that state of being, there's usually a depression met with their recovery because everything that they believed to be true about the universe, about the world, about themselves, is being stripped away from them and they're being told that's not true, that's not real. And that's a very jarring experience to go through. So even in recovery, there are other negative side effects that, that come with that because, I mean, imagine you as a regular person, you perceive reality to be what it is, you're like, yes, this is real, this is true. Imagine someone being like, oh, actually everything that you're saying, thinking, feeling is not real. It's not in touch with reality. That's like really hard to grasp. And I think with some of these people who experience psychosis, they want to hold on to that reality. They want to be validated on what they believe reality to be. And I can imagine that's really hard to grasp. And so again, that's really the difference between psychosis and a spiritual experience. And something that's always been scary to me about um, spirituality, because I remember when I got into spirituality when I was younger and I would always see people say like, oh, you know, you're having a spiritual awakening when everyone thinks you're crazy. And it's like, oh, people are going to think you're crazy. Like, that's how you know that you're becoming more aligned or you're becoming one with the universe because people think that you are insane because you, you've broken out of the matrix. And that rhetoric is really popular within spiritual communities. And I think that just kind of digs people in deeper. I am, again, all for spirituality and doing whatever it is that you need to do to, like, get through life. But skepticism I think should still be considered and should be promoted even by spiritual gurus like use your own judgment don't let people tell you what you should believe you can listen with open ears and consider and be like oh does that resonate or does that not resonate and if it doesn't that doesn't mean that you're stuck in the matrix or that you're dumb or that you aren't spiritual enough I think it's really important for anyone's spiritual growth and journeys to really like tap into themselves and and see what rings true to them because spirituality is such a, a personal experience and journey please remain skeptical be open-minded but don't fall for everything don't listen to just anybody whether it's a friend a family member or someone on the internet trying to tell you like what you should believe. Something that I really don't like about the new age spirituality culture online is the way that people use it to posture themselves and to kind of have this self-righteousness because oh well I'm more aligned, I meditate more, I'm this that and the third and that's why I mean that's how cults happen especially when they're preaching to people who need it like chances are if you're speech seeking spiritual guidance there's something maybe in your life that needs some compassion, there's a void in your life that you may be wanting to fill or there's something about your life you wanna understand and you're more vulnerable, you're, you're more vulnerable and these people know that. When I was 19 and 20 years old, I went through a spiritual psychosis. But looking back, I can see the symptoms that were like starting to show, but I didn't understand it. Um, and I was like defining it as becoming enlightened. Uh, things like I just had severe paranoia or I felt like I could see through people. And like God was talking to me, telling me like people's intentions and that people entering my life or my ex's life at the time were like evil spirits. And they were like sent out to teach me lessons and like nobody could be trusted and I can only trust the angels. And I was like constantly looking for like number signs in the universe. Um, but then the like big psychosis happened when my ex, my first love and I, we split up and it was like one day to the other. And it just, I cannot explain it, it was like the big bang. Oh, it's also important to probably mention that it was a substance induced psychosis. And all of a sudden, nothing made sense. And I was questioning reality. I was questioning 
spirituality. I was questioning everything. Like nothing made sense. I was so confused. So I was very vulnerable and I was very desperate. And I really, really lean on spirituality and used different spiritual practices as like an explanation and a way to like define my reality and like carve out a path that like was socially acceptable and could like give explanation to these really crazy symptoms and experiences that I was having. I believed that I was like becoming too enlightened for this world. And the government was like catching on to me because I had access to like different dimensions and I had access to knowledge that I wasn't supposed to have. But yeah, I don't like the, some will call spiritual narcissism where people will try to use spirituality as a way to put them in a position of authority. There's a phrase called spiritual bypassing, which is a tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished developmental tasks. The term was introduced in the mid-1980s by John Wellwood, a Buddhist teacher and psychotherapist. Clinicians in pastoral psychology have identified both beneficial and detrimental manifestations of behavior that could be described as spiritual bypass. Good ex Oh, your dad died? Well, try meditating. You know, he's just in a better place. He's moved on. His spirit is on to the next journey, the next life. And you shouldn't be sad because that's just a part of the human spiritual soul experience, <laughs> you know? Even, you know, the in the definition of spiritual bypassing, it says it's avoiding um, psychological wounds, even physical wounds. I've seen people literally say that they healed their kidney with their mind. Transforms DNA, my mind's making things move. Whoa, kidney infection, I healed that too. Now she seems like a nice lady, but I do draw the line at like, changing your DNA with the power of your mind. I do think that is cuckoo bananas and not something that we should be promoting online for people to also think and to, you know, play devil's advocate, whatever. I do believe in the power of the mind. Like it's amazing what the mind can do. And I've heard these crazy stories about people like healing broken bones by, you know, the power of thought. And I'm not here to discredit those experiences, but I do think ignoring medical attention for serious illnesses, injuries, diseases, etc., and promoting that online could have negative consequences. I feel like people like Shannon Blake probably just like did too much ayahuasca and like think they're God. I don't know if that's where it all started, but that is a big part of this whole spirit new age spirituality thing is like white people going to Peru and like taking ayahuasca three times in a week to like try to <laughs> fix themselves or find enlightenment or whatever. I don't knock ayahuasca whatsoever. I know that is like an ancient medicine that has been used for years by so many people, but unfortunately Westerners, Westerners take stuff like that and kind of ruin it because they ruin it for themselves and they take too much of it in too short of a time and then they like lose brain cells or go into actual psychosis and never return. Um, I have stories about that. Maybe I'll tell that story on the Patreon. I could tell so many stories about my spiritual experiences, both with and without certain uh, molecules. Don't do drugs, kids. And if you do, be mindful, don't overindulge because there are consequences. If you really want to get in touch with your spirituality, go into the woods, go into the ocean. <laughs> like you don't have to do the drug. You don't have to do the ayahuasca. You don't have to do the DMT to open your third eye. And again, I'm not knocking it. Maybe one day I will have my ayahuasca journey, but I think the issue is the normalization of doing DMT or ayahuasca or any sort of mind altering psychedelic substance substance without being responsible about it because people think just because it's like a spiritual thing that that gives them the pass to just like overindulge and go head first in it without researching or really know knowing what they're getting into and knowing the risks of it. And then promoting it online to other people is also very irresponsible without being clear of its effects and what happens before, during, after, etc. I know ayahuasca or DMT has helped a lot of people and I definitely, again, do not knock it, but again, just be responsible, please. People like her, I always found fascinating and I'm not singling her out. Like, again, she seems like a nice girl. I don't know her. I, I don't mean to like dogpile on her, but the archetype that she represents of like the spiritually enlightened white girl who's probably from California and lives in a van and probably has rich parents, let's be honest. Speaking of rich white women, go check out my Patreon episode about the Brandy Melville documentary. Join my Patreon, madisonbrown.com slash madisonbrown if you'd like to support this channel. Thanks! I find them interesting because typically they are always adorned in the crystals and the jewels and the tattoos and the locks and it's a lot and it's a very maximalist 
aesthetic, I've noticed. I always thought that was interesting because I thought the point of spirituality is or at least a part of spirituality, is the ability to separate oneself from worldly possessions and material desires and things like that. And like all the stuff that is in the van and on the body costs money and it's like a lot of stuff. I feel like sometimes with new age spirituality, there's this unspoken standard when it comes to the aesthetic. Like, if you want to be considered spiritual, you got to look it. You got to play the part. You got to wear the rings and have the right hairstyle and the harem pants and the Birkenstocks. You know what I'm saying? Truly, to be spiritual, all you need is your, your mind, your soul, your body. It's kind of why monks are like bald and like wear the same thing every day. So I always thought that was interesting how like you have to kind of adhere to this certain look or aesthetic to be a spiritualist online. Mind you, I love the earthy aesthetic. I love the boho look. I also, I feel like my personal style fits in the, into that as well. So I'm not knocking it. I'm just making an observation about the sometimes like maximalist element to the spiritual aesthetic, if you will. Dress however you want. It's all self-expression. I'm not here to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't wear, but I thought that was interesting, especially because with the adornments, the accessories and whatnot does border on, on cultural appropriation or just full-on cultural appropriation, which I think is interesting. And that kind of brings me to the final section of this video, which is mostly me just kind of chatting about the spiritual culture that I see on the internet and what maybe I would consider the other side of the spectrum, which is the unhealthy obsession, little bit of delusion, but not full on psychosis, just an unhealthy obsession that should be examined, um, which I think is what a lot of people online are talking about. Cause I've seen a lot of girls be like, oh, I was in spiritual psychosis in 2019. Like I was paying a tarot card reader like $200 a week to tell me about my ex. Or I saw one girl who was like, I paid 10 different Etsy artists to draw my soulmate. Have you ever seen those where it's like, oh, you can pay me $10 and I'll draw your soulmate. And of course, all the pictures that she got looked completely different. I feel like TikTok has really just made people lose their minds, <laughs> even more so with like, the algorithm knows what you're going to engage with, right? So if you watch a tarot reading, it's just gonna send you a bunch more tarot readings. And if you're already in this vulnerable state of looking for answers, and maybe you went through a breakup and you're looking for some sort of hope to grasp onto, these tarot readers, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They will s send you these messages to prey on you so that you buy their courses, so that you engage with their content and they get more followers and more money. And it's really sad because it's so easy to go down that that rabbit hole. Like, girl, he's not coming back. Just put, put down the cards, put, delete TikTok. He isn't coming back and that's okay, move on. If he was really your soulmate, don't you think he'd wanna be with you? Isn't that kind of how that works? Like a man who loves you wants to be with you. A man who you're meant to be with, you will be with. And no amount of spells, oh my God, enough of the spells. Please, for the love of God, do not waste your hard earned money on some Etsy Wiccan to cast a spell, a love spell on a man who doesn't give a f You can't buy your way to love. I thought we knew this. But yeah, there's a lot of scammers on TikTok, a lot of like fake, tarot readers and astrologists even probably scamming you. And when you're not in a state of like vulnerability and obsession and limerence, it's so easy to see how fake and BS these tarot readers are. Like you'll be scrolling and it's like a woman with a card up and she's like, king of chariots, wands of spades. He's been thinking about you all week. He hasn't reached out because he's scared, but you should expect a text message at 2.23 on May 31st. Like, it's like, what the fuck? If you see birds in the sky, that means he's thinking about you. And why is it always about a, why is it always about a man? Riddle me that. Why is it always about a man? It's never, oh, that friend of yours who you haven't talked to since first grade is thinking about you or make sure to do your taxes. <laughs> it's always like, expect someone from your past to return. And it's like, what? Who? What are you talking about <laughs> it's so weird i hate it i always click um i'm not interested but somehow they keep finding me anyway i think the signs are and the angel numbers of it all are really dangerous like i love a cute little angel number like i think they're cute but i don't really think much of it i believe that if you want a sign to be a sign it will be a sign like you can make anything a sign and i honestly don't think it's necessarily inherently bad like sometimes we need a little like synchronicity or a little like boost to bring us some optimism. And I think that's okay. 
but it can go too far with some people and they start to obsessively look for signs and they're asking for signs all the time and they're relying on somebody else or something else to create their reality because they don't believe they can achieve or find what it is that they're looking for on their own so they need external factors to confirm that this thing will happen this thing is coming for them and i understand that but again with tarot readings and all this stuff like i encourage you to create your own reality and not rely on other people to tell you what it is and if he texts you at 3 33 p.m that doesn't mean you're meant to be he just happened to text you at 3 33 p.m and you know what he may even be he may be caught up he knows the game if you know he saw your your uh, 888 tattoo on your back and was like oh I know how to get this girl. The twin flames thing drives me insane. This I think is like the ass of spirituality or like internet spirituality. I don't know where the twin flames thing came from. I don't know if it comes from like a traditional culture or indigenous culture. I don't know anything about but whatever the westerners have done with twin flames is atrocious it's essentially it's like soulmates but like times 10 where you and the other person are two halves of one whole and that sounds cute and romantic and stuff and it doesn't have to be with a romantic partner it could be a friend or a family member but when people assume that they are twin flames with their love interest, things can get really, really scary and dark and weird because essentially it's codependency, but make it spiritual. And that's how they justify these toxic behaviors and obsessive thoughts because it's a spiritual thing. Oh, you don't understand. We're meant to be together. We're twin flames. So you keep going back to the toxic ex or you stay in a relationship that you really shouldn't be in that is deteriorating your mental health because you're twin flames. And and it's like the whole idea is that one person is the chaser and the other person is the runner and you know they go throughout their entire lives running and chasing and coming but it's like oh my god don't you just want to be in a normal healthy relationship like damn this doesn't sound fun or romantic it sounds draining i hate that this is a thing that people have latched onto. There's even like a Twin Flames cult. I need to watch that documentary. I don't know much about it, but the Twin Flames thing is weird. And maybe I'm selfish for thinking this, but like I am whole on my own. I am a whole soul. I'm not the other half of another entity. I think that's very strange. <laughs> all that to be said, have discernment. And you know, with, with all of this, I'm gonna close it out with, with some empathy because I really empathize with people who become obsessed with these spiritual beliefs and practices they're looking for something they're looking for an answer and especially when it comes to romantic partners and spirituality i don't think it's actually the person's love that they're looking for i think they're looking for something that goes way deeper than just the relationship with that person it all goes back to childhood doesn't it but it isn't until you heal the relationship with the self when you can finally let go of these obsessive behaviors when it comes to romantic interest. Um, once you heal that part of yourself, this stuff becomes irrelevant to you and it seems so silly, but when you're in it, you're in it and it's hard to take a step back and have a bird's eye view on everything. So if you are caught up in some sort of limerence, obsession, delusion, I would recommend therapy and I like genuinely mean that. I don't mean that in a condescending way because I, I think I've been there, honestly. I've gone down some rabbit holes that make me look crazy and I, I don't identify with that anymore, but I've been there and it sucks. And there was a lot of healing that I had to do, but I was looking outwards. I was looking to men and to relationships, other people to distract me from what was happening on the inside that wasn't being addressed. And it was during the loneliest parts of my life where I, I think I was losing touch with reality um and i will never get those years back i mean there were months where i was like damn you were really like so concerned about someone who did not think about you at all and you're like looking at the readings and this and the astrology and it's like what a waste of time what a waste of mental space you know and i also think people are looking for community i mean there's people who leave their homes and leave friends and family to join these cults or join these spiritual groups and they want that community. They want to feel like they're a part of something. And I get that. That's a very human thing. That is very normal. And unfortunately, if you're very vulnerable, people who don't have the best interest at heart will take advantage of you. And they will try to gaslight you and to make you think that you're, you know, you're not aligned enough. You're not spiritual enough. You need to buy these things or you need to get rid of your birth name and adopt a Sanskrit name and completely change who you are to find happiness or to be your truest self. And that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Discernment 
is key. Go to therapy, have friends, have family, don't isolate yourself. The best way I think to get more tapped in with your spirituality is to go outside, touch grass, literally put your little piggies on the ground and just breathe. Thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, join my Patreon. I made a video about the Brandy Melville documentary. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.